What's up guys, Leon Sylvester here from SoberClear.com and today I'm going to be sharing five simple steps on how you can get sober in 2021. Now the very first step, the very first thing for you to understand is that you have absolutely nothing wrong with you. 2020 has been a roller coaster of a year. We already know that there's been so many things that have been going on outside of our control. And it, for a lot of people out there, it's been one of the most challenging years that they've probably ever faced with businesses closing down, being unable to travel home for Christmas, you know, these, these lockdowns and all of this stuff is it's really hurting people. And people are in a lot of pain. I speak to a lot of people, I see people affected by it all the time. And it's just, it's been a very difficult year. Now, if your drinking has increased as a result of this, that is not the problem of you, right? That doesn't mean that you've got something wrong with you. It doesn't mean that you are a problem. It doesn't mean that you've got a disease. It doesn't mean that you're an alcoholic. If your drinking has increased during these times, that is not the nature of you. It is the nature of the drug, right? What we've got to understand is that alcohol is a drug, right? If you drink alcohol, if you drink one drink, and you drink another drink, and you drink another drink, and you drink another drink, that is the nature of an addictive drug, right? You drink one drink, you get more thirsty because alcohol dehydrates you. Then your inhibitions are lowered, so you drink another one, right? That doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. And whereas most people do believe that if their drinking is out of control and they're drinking more than they intend to, that somehow they've got a character flaw, that they've got a personality defect. And I'm sorry, but it's just not true. You do not need to buy into this to, to stop drinking in 2021. And if that's something that you've been buying into for all of your life and you think that the reason why you drink is because you've got something inherently wrong with you, well, I would say it's time to kind of leave that behind you. You have nothing wrong with you. You got addicted to a drug, right? So just by kind of coming to grips on that, that alone, understanding that, you can now start to approach the situation differently. You don't need to kind of beat yourself up and say, damn, I'm just a failure. I suck. I, I'm going to live with this for the rest of my life. No matter what I do, I'm going to have to beat myself up forever. And alcohol is always going to be a part of my life. You don't need to do that. I did that, right? I was doing that for close to a decade. I always thought that, you know, I thought that maybe I've got the genetic of being addictive. I thought I had an addictive personality, right? I used to believe this stuff. I, I looked at my family tree and I'd see all of these people that have got drug and alcohol problems and then there's me. So it must be me that's the problem. And then I'd be getting told this from other people, from AA meetings, from looking at stuff on the internet, from reading about alcoholism. Maybe I am the problem. And I bought into that. And what ended up happening as a result of thinking that I've got something wrong with me, I've got some character defect. Well, I've almost got an excuse now. So if I'm having a really hard day, and then I remember this, this label that I've given myself of being a, an alcoholic or having an addictive personality. Well, if that's me and that's what I identify with, if I'm stressed, if I'm angry, if I'm upset and I've given myself this label, then well, what would that person do? What would that person with that label do? Well, they take drugs or they drink alcohol, right? They do something because that's the label that I've given myself. So now what can happen is it becomes very easy to adopt or to, sorry, to progress that kind of thinking into a craving. And what happens with the craving? Well, the relapse occurs. So I don't give myself that label anymore and I'm perfectly okay. I don't need to give myself that label. And if, if you do want to give yourself that label, then my channel is probably not for you because I just don't agree with that. That's not something I do. It's not something I recommend people do because it's an incredibly ineffective approach. If you look at the statistics and so on, it, the success rate of giving yourself these labels is, it's very, very low. I'm not saying that it's not, you know, it's not possible to do that, but for me, it didn't work. For a lot of viewers of the channel, it didn't work. So in 2021, the very first step is to understand that you are not the problem. You have got nothing wrong with you. It, drinking alcohol is not the nature of you as a person. It is the nature of the drug. And it's also the nature of the conditioning, which we'll jump into a little bit later. Now, the second step to getting sober is to ignore mainstream society. You need to really, really bring awareness and, and, and really just ignore what most people think about alcohol. What we've got to understand is that drinkers think that alcohol is a good thing. Drinkers think that when they drink alcohol, they are going to get something from it. They're going to, you know, be able to relax. They're going to be able to relieve stress. They're going to have more courage. Drinkers truly believe that. They have fully bought in to thinking that alcohol gives them something. I used to think the same thing. I used to, in all of my previous attempts to, to get sober and stop drinking, I would stop drinking. Then I would go and look at my friends, or I'd go and look on the TV, or I'd go to a bar right? And I wouldn't be drinking. But I'd look at all these people and think, wow, they've got something there. They've got something good. They, 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 they must be enjoying themselves. I can see them 
drinking shots and it's the alcohol that's creating this good time for them. It must be the alcohol. I used to really believe that. So if, and then what would happen is that, is that would get confirmed to me. So I'd look on the BBC and the BBC would come up with a thing that says wine helps you live longer. And then I'd watch a, a movie and then, you know, the really the charismatic person in the movie, the, 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 the charming person, the charming man, the charming lady, they have a drink in their hand all the time. So I think, well, I've just seen all of this stuff outside. And then I go into the mainstream media or I go into like, you know, watching mainstream TV or whatever it is. And that belief would get confirmed to me. So naturally, I'm starting to buy into this illusion that alcohol is a good thing, that alcohol is a great thing to drink and it really does help you and it really provides a benefit to you. That is complete and utter crap. Why is it that alcohol is the one that gives you a benefit, but all of these other drugs don't? Why is it cigarettes don't give you a benefit? Heroin doesn't give you any benefit. Crack doesn't give you any benefits. Why do we know that these things are completely wrong, whereas alcohol is okay? Why does that happen? I'm not sure. I think that, you know, it's just been millennia of, of, of drinking alcohol and everybody just kind of like, nobody ever stops down and logically goes, wait a minute, what the hell is going on here? And you've got to ignore these people. You've kind of got to build a new worldview by watching this channel. There's many other channels on YouTube. You can join programs, you can read the books, you can get coaches, you can do whatever it takes. But what you've got to do is almost give yourself a new worldview where you ignore the people that think of alcohol as a good thing. And you do that through using first principles thinking. You use the mental model, you really start to break down everything that you think you know about alcohol. So then when you see these normal, these normal drinkers and these people drinking and this mainstream stuff, well, you can kind of go, hmm, wait a minute. It's almost like when you know marketing and you understand marketing and you see somebody marketing something, well, you understand it. You're like, I see what they're doing here. And you can get into that state of mind with alcohol. So that's what you want to do. You want to ignore mainstream media and build that new paradigm where you just ignore those people, right? So the third thing is it all comes down to mental awareness and it comes down to the conditioning, right? So what, what basically I was talking about before is, is we've been conditioned through sheer repetition, through all of these different inputs going to our head. We have been conditioned to think that we get something from drinking alcohol. And the trick to this is you need to bring a logical awareness to this conditioning. So you can do that through reading books. There are many great books out there that will help you go through that process, right? There are also many great YouTube channels out there um, that help people go through that process. You can invest in programs, you can invest in courses, in coaches to help you go through that process. And what you essentially have to do is you have to bring awareness to every part of the conditioning, right? Every part of alcohol that we think that we know about, you need to kind of go, okay, now I understand this point. Okay, now I understand this point. And what you're doing is you're almost logically removing any argument that alcohol is a good thing. And you're building a paradigm where you know that it's a poison, right? It is nothing but a poison. And that can be an arduous process. It can take time. Um, you know, you can join the Sober Clear program. We help people go through that process. I'm going to link you to a video below this where you can talk, I'll talk about the method. You can see if that's a good idea for you and so on. But yeah, essentially what you're doing is you are bringing awareness to everything that society thinks about alcohol. You're just trying to build this new paradigm, this new worldview where you just don't want to drink anymore. Now, the fourth step to stopping drinking is once you've kind of gone through that process, what usually happens is you get this light bulb moment. And when, when this happens, you get like this, this shot of like, oh, everything makes sense now. And what you need to do is, is you don't need to wait for this magical moment. So what, what I mean, this is like a mistake that a lot of people do is they kind of stretch it out. They, they count the days and then it gets to day 30 and it gets to day 60 and it gets to day 90. And they're like, well, I'm more of a non-drinker on day 60 than I was on day 30. And they're always, it's almost like they're always waiting for this confirmation to say, you've done it. You're a non-drinker. And they get to a year and they're like, does that mean I'm a non-drinker now? What's going on? So instead of doing that, Basically, the day that you decide to be a non-drinker, the day that you've reframed alcohol and you've had that paradigm shift and everything's just clicks and you're like, I just don't want to do this anymore. That's when you just go all in. From that day onwards, you just say, I'm done, I'm moving on. And you don't wait for a magical moment. The magical moment happens the moment you make the decision to be a non-drinker. That was a big game changer for me because the difference between making like, you know, a kind of a decision and making a decision, there's a big difference. And when you make the decision to be the non-drinker, don't wait for a magical moment. You want to just go forwards. You want to just start propelling yourself, going towards that great quality of life that I always talk about on the channel. You know, you want to be able to 
to show up more in your family, show up more in your relationship, show up more in your business. Just start moving forward. Start getting back in the gym. Start doing things that are good for you. Don't wait for a magical moment. Just start making a bit of progress. And then what will happen after a week is, well, you've done a few good things for yourself. I'm not saying that you need to become Superman, but even if that means going to sleep early, you know, doing a bit of journaling, doing a little bit of proper relaxation, what will happen is you'll look back at that week and go, yeah, I am a non-drinker and I'm moving forward. Instead of like doing nothing different and then getting to day 30 and looking back and going, well, nothing's changed. I'm, I'm still the same person. Does that mean I'm still a non-drinker? I don't, I don't rate that mindset. I don't think that mindset works. It didn't work for me in the past when I tried to stop drinking. It was when I just made the decision, cut off all possibility of failure. I, I could see alcohol for what it was now and I could just go, boom, moving forward, going towards a better quality of life. And yeah, the, the, that step is so important. Don't wait for a magical moment. And the fifth thing I want to share, guys, is it's all about building new relationships. It's all about f making new friends. Because when we drink, we can often have like a circle of acquaintances that we're not really friends with. I know I appreciate some of you guys may not even uh, drink with people. You may drink alone. And I get that. But even, even then, it's still going to be relevant to you at this point. So what we want to do is we that, that circle of acquaintances and people that we drink with, well, if these are really your friends, obviously you still want to hang around with them. But because a lot of these relationships will revolve around alcohol, well, what I did is, is, is I kind of started to separate myself a little bit from that kind of behavior. And I, and I stopped having interest with a lot of those people. And I went to find new friendships. And I, I would find people that I knew that they had hobbies, they had interests, they didn't have a drinking problem. And we could create like friendships based on mutual interests, on going out, on having fun. And I really tried to stick to, to those kind of people. And I'm sure you, you know the difference when I'm talking about that, but we kind of got like acquaintances when it comes to drinking and then we've got our real friends. So I just put my energy back into the real friends and I just continued to do that again and again and again. Now, obviously when it comes to being a non-drinker, it can be hard to find those people. So I'm gonna put a link to a Facebook community in the description, the Sober Clear Facebook community. There are a bunch of great people in there, all living alcohol free. So that's a really cool thing for you to check out. But the point of the matter is that when we find relationships with people who don't revolve around alcohol, it can really help because those people that are all drinking really heavily, well, they all see alcohol as a good thing. If we can find friends that don't revolve around drinking, they, they don't really buy into the alcohol game, then that can just be a game changer because it kind of gives you it helps you create that paradigm where alcohol just isn't a good thing, right? So if we can have friends that also don't agree with that, well, that can really help us on our journey. Anyway, guys, if you click the videos on the screen now, you can learn more about the one thing I learned that got me to stop drinking as well as some of the major benefits of being a non-drinker. Thanks a lot.